Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, Space Quest 6. For some of you, it was only seconds ago. For, for others of you, and I know by the view counts, uh, you just skip to this one. So, uh, good. There is a weird, like, <laughs> disconnect between episode number and view count. Like, well, there'll be, like, times where there'll be, like, 10, 20 more of views of an episode later down the line from others. Right? Hmm. Like, the second yeah. episode on Saturday always has more views. <laughs> always, like, yeah. What? You take a look at those view counts? Fucking embarrassing. <laughs> well... I, <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, no, you're right. I, actually, actually, I think they're. I, I, I'm surprised they're that many. Actually, <laughs> they're <laughs> better than they used to be. They are. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm glad hey everybody. I'm glad people watch Welcome us. To, to talk YouTube. Well, Roger just kind of sits in the middle of the room. It's funny stuff. But... <laughs> All right, should we should we play a video game, guys? Uh, yeah. Let's play a game. I gotta get Let's... more comfortable. My back isn't. My back is not doing well these days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready to go. Let's... Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm retro go. games. I'm an old man. Right, threw my leg, threw my back out. Right. Right. Just gotta crack my bones. Programming controls. Those buttons seem to be self-explanatory. I wonder what they do. So, Let's take a look at these self-explanatory buttons. Stellar's not dead. Like that's clear. Um, I mean, maybe. I mean, definitely. I've never played this, but I, I, I would put money on it. Well, I mean, you didn't see her die, so... That's... I, that. I'm trying hard to care whether or not she's dead. <laughs> wow. What? I mean, not wrong, but wow. <laughs> uh, we're trying to be more positive here on level zero NPCs. Yeah. I'm positive uh, I don't care that she's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's cold. Okay, but that passed. Okay, so things are looking up. Yeah, look, we're gonna make, we're gonna play it to the end, guys. So yeah. like, yeah. buckle in. But, well, I'm, I'm ready. I'm in. Wow, a message for me. I must be getting popular. I wonder what it is. Me too. I wonder, wonder. <gasps> oh no! Oh, we have a moment. They faked. Stellar. What happened? The picture's gone. You're alive? I told you. I told you. You weren't wrong. So, I have a theory, but I don't want to say it in case I'm wrong. So don't worry about it. I'm Go not going to say anything. No, no, Let's no, hear no. it. I mean, like, I'd like to hear, since I'm the only one who really kind of knows how this game goes, um, I would love to hear your theories about things so that we can, like, because most of the time, you know, when people are playing retro games like this... Um, they've already played the game. Like, there's very few blind playthroughs, especially like old school Sierra games, because these that this would be rough, right? Like having to watch people try and like puzzle their way through these games on, yeah. especially YouTube, like Twitch, uh, maybe. Yeah, you know, if there's like audience participation, but so yeah, bring it. Let's hear it. I I think the old woman she specifically mentioned uh uh. A young uh, cadet, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, other than the fact that I am pretty sure that this doesn't want to acknowledge Space Quest Five at all, wonder if that's Quirk, and she wants revenge. Ooh. Interesting, ah. mm. very interesting. Mm. But then again, that would be interesting. So I'm not sure it would be true. <laughs> <laughs> That would also require the game to acknowledge that Captain Quirk was a thing. Yeah. So I right, let I, us let us uh, yeah speak to the captain about uh, Commander Kabasa. You're going to think I'm crazy, but I've just received a distress message on my compost, and it was from Stellar. Wilco, have you been whipping cleaning fluid again? I'm uh, it's 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 called huffing. <laughs> She's being held on Delta Berksilon by Sharpay. How did you get Wilco, that? Do you realize how irrational that sounds? We buried Stellar. You were there. Maybe you need a rest. Take a couple of hours off. Sir. Wilco, we have our orders from Starcon and we'll be carrying them out. 
Drop it, Janitor. Leave the bridge now, Wilco. I've made my decision. It's good captaining. Janitor Wilco, you must have something to clean up somewhere. Make yourself scarce. We're very busy up here. Mm. Okay. Well. Okay. Hmm. Well, looks like we have to do this on our own because no one will believe us. That's true. Well, we're going to have to figure out where, what we're doing here. Um, we uh, need to find a way and, uh, to get down to uh, Delta Berksalon. Yes. That's a good point. Maybe we should, uh, we should head down there. Um... After all, it's right Joel's next to Major Dad Salon. Circuit Sydney. <laughs> oh gosh, Major Dad Salon. All right, G sure. Gerald McRaney Salon. <laughs> it was actually the true uh, name. All right. Well, let's go to the shuttle bay. It's a good idea. Is it? Sure. I'm, why not? I'm just spitballing here. Nobody wants to see me try. No one wants to see you try. Nobody wants to see me try. Then again, we are the level zero NPCs. That's true. Magnum Opus belongs to an elite Starcon fighting forces called the Flying Flingers. FF for short. That's Chesbro, one of the Shuttle Bay guards. That big thing looks like an enemy from Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Yep. Kind of, yeah. I Magnum like the cigar. Talk. He fancies himself to be like one of those Buckingham Palace types. Remember that game? That game was great. That was a great game. <laughs> you consider saying hi until you remember how dedicated he is to his job, and you wouldn't want him to get in trouble for slacking off. I like Chesbro, and I like his design. I wonder why you don't worry about that for yourself. He's a good dude. Yeah, right? An interesting thought, but you wouldn't want to give him the wrong idea about your intentions. I really don't think that's a good... No amount of brute strength can pry these doors apart, even if you had some. An interesting idea. What are you up to, Roger? Why aren't they letting... Why aren't they letting us go through? An interesting idea. Good question. Oh. No amount of brute... I know why. I know why. Because the game doesn't want you to. Yeah, because the game is like, no, you gotta solve a puzzle first. You gotta get these guys out of the way. So that's right. that's the, you know, a little line of dialogue saying, you know, we ain't moving for nothing, pal. Yeah, well, that that's kind of what I was hoping by talking to them. Actually, I forgot that there's there you're you're just supposed to infer that you can't get in there because these guys yep. are blocking the way. Yep, you sure do. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Fine, but so making um, games is hard. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I'm going to save us a, a fair amount of time. Um, what you're supposed to do is kind of like figure out first off that you got to you got to get those guys out of the way. Right. Right. Uh, and in order to do so, you got to figure out some way to to get there by force, which is not at all like. You know what you would typically expect out of a uh, out of a space quest game? Not Here at all. Not at all. In fact, I don't think they've ever done that. I mean, you've done. There's been some violence. Yeah, but not like it's it's more just using your noggin because that's space. Yeah, quest. so I forget. I forget over the years since I've played Space Quest Six, um, and we're getting to the point where I was like, I could not finish this game without a walkthrough. Right. Um. That uh, you're supposed to, uh, like, if you're supposed to figure this out in any other way, aside from just kind of, like, going through all of the known races and just reading stuff about them. Um, but, uh, alright, I gotta, I gotta remember the right name here. Um, well, it's definitely not in the A's and B's, so uh, let's go down... It's it's uh it's a riff off of the, off of Vulcan, um, so I mean let's just 
Vulgars. There we go. The Vulgars. The <laughs> Vulgars. Read the Vulgars. Go ahead. Give us a read. The Vulgars are a peaceful race of brilliant and logical thinkers whose only real joy in life is to stride around the galaxy with superior attitudes and correct other people's grammar and spelling. They also enjoy designing outer space strategy simulation games. This makes them nearly as insufferable as university academia. Academia. Academicians. Academic. Academicians? Academicians? I don't know, man. Fuck, man. Anyway. But not as well paid. (laughs) That's a crappy word. (laughs) Considering their placid and studious lifestyle, it's interesting to note that the Vulgars have developed an extremely practical martial arts technique called the Vulgar Nerve Pinch. That looks like it said Neve Pinch. Yeah, Neve (laughs) Pinch. This is a tactile oral maneuver in which the pincher pinches the bundle of nerve fibers at the base of the neck while whispering dialogue from either Tango and Cash or Hudson Hawk. <laughs> I told you there were references to Hudson Hawk and Tango and Cash in this game. Mm-hmm. Solid. Yeah, it's, there it is. This particular combination of stimuli results in a searing flash of pain and then unconsciousness which can last for several hours. The technique is demonstrated in Hollow Joint Program 5551212. All right. So, let's go back to the Hollow Joint. Hollow Joint! The Hollow Cabana. At the Hollow. And, uh, and watch, uh, 5551212. Hollow Cabana! Alright, five. Oh, 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 there you go. Five, 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 one, two, one, two. Eight. Oh, something's happening. Welcome to Hollow Suite Program five, 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 one, two, one, two. The Volga Nerve Beam. Ooh. Despite our reputation for being pacifist. We Vulgars have developed an extremely practical martial arts technique used mainly for defensive purposes. It is called the Vulgar Nerve Pinch. Hmm. This is a tactile oral maneuver in which the applier pinches the bundle of nerve fibers at the base of the neck while whispering into the victim's ear dialogue from either Tango and Cash or Hudson Hawk. Hmm. This well, since we're kings of references, guys, uh, let's let's throw out our favorite Tango and Cash or Hudson Hawk lines. <laughs> I can't. I'm waiting. Similar to a temporary orally induced robotomy. Who is the villain in Hudson Hawk? Rendered unconscious for several hours. When they awaken. They will remember nothing of how they came to be unconscious, if they are extremely lucky. I shall demonstrate on my most eager volunteer. You will please to pay attention. Was it Stallone that was Tango? In this <laughs> manner. Please to notice the location of my hand. Or- as I or is that Kurt Russell? Chant of cinematic morphine. Which one was Tango? Damn it! He mutters something thankfully Jesus. unintelligible I don't know. in the ear of the volunteer. Oh, Tango's on. Maybe we can fix me up with your sister. I can follow up the whole night. Oh, we're gonna have margaritas together. Oh, the two of us get oh, oh, oh. We have fun. Oh, get the hubba hubba going. Stallone was Tango I, for I, sure. I think, <laughs> I think it would have been so much better so, if they'd actually like see, put put some said, actual quote, dialogue. Some yeah. A proper grip yeah. to the neck. It will disable nine out of ten neck bearing species. Like they made. They were going to do the joke anyway. They made the joke. Program. Just find a Thank line you. from it. It was it was at least four hours worth of film. Well, probably not that, actually. What, like three hours-ish? Yeah. Between the two films, there's got to have been a couple of lines they could have chucked in there. Was Danny Aiello the villain, or was James Coburn the villain in Hudson Hawk? 
the villain in Hudson Hawk was uh I haven't seen it in so long. Oh yeah, no. Like the only thing I really remember from Hudson Hawk was like Xanadu right at the beginning, you know. Right. So Bruce Willis like, was a cat burglar, is that yeah. sort of what it was? I also remember that there was a Super Nintendo game, I think, that was based off of Hudson Hawk. Or was it just like old school NES? I don't remember. Something to put on, on Wednesday's Day someday in the distant future, which we're going to forget all about. So. Oh my god, I'm reading some quotes from Hudson Hawk. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's not. Bring it. It's not. No, Bring I, it. I can't. They're, they don't age well. Let's just say that. Don't they? <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's unfortunate. Right, yeah. Oh, here's the top one. Hudson Hawk says, "If the Mario Brothers weren't New Jersey's third largest crime family, I'd say kiss my ass. But considering your status, I'll say slurp my butt." And on that note, let's go to some space questions. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck sake! I got nothing, man. I got nothing. Like that was the top quote. That was, that was the top quote. That was the top wow. quote. All right. Uh, Vilar again. <clears throat> what uh, What would you say to an alien if you suddenly found yourself becoming the first contact? Is there anything you'd want to show the alien before the government comes to steal him away? Well, I think, I think it's, awfully, uh, it's awfully crazy to assume that the government's coming to steal an alien away. I mean, <laughs> these guys have... Also, I gotta say that this uh, question seems plagiarized from the movie Contact. I was gonna say Mac and Me. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) That that did come out first. I'm doing the thing with my hands. (laughs) Another solid deep cut from the level zero NPCs. (laughs) If you haven't seen Mac and Me, uh, me. good. Good for you. (laughs) Good for you. Your life is better. (laughs) <laughs> Actually, yeah, like, Mac and Me is one of those experiences that you could live your entire life without seeing and have been just as happy, if not happier. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd, uh, yeah, I agree. I think uh, it, it's not a cinematic masterpiece. The best way to see it, honestly, is on Netflix through Mystery Science Theater 3000. First episode yes, of The Gauntlet. Please, if you're going to watch it, yeah, episode one of The Gauntlet, Mac and Me. Um, or uh, new... al- alternately through um, uh, you doing a YouTube search for Paul Rudd, <laughs> Mac and Me. <laughs> Paul Paul Rudd clips from Conan O'Brien. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's classic. It's it's terrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, but that's not what we were asked. We were asked what we would say to an alien. I try to uh, I try to finagle some uh, technology or uh, uh, secrets to longevity. Uh, maybe uh, medical miracles or. Uh, something to fix my goddamn back right now. That would be nice. <laughs> you uh, you got any morphine? You got any morphine, man? <laughs> Alien morphine? Space morphine? Alien morphine. Some, some. I don't know sp- if I would ask them anything. I would like. I would offer them something like you know a soda or a cigarette. Yeah. Ooh, a song maybe. <laughs> la la la. Nah, fuck that. They had a long trip. Soda or smoke. Soda. <laughs> I mean, if 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 I had made first contact with an alien, I don't know that I would assume immediately that it could speak our language. Um, I mean, like if we somehow established that, then like, I don't know, man. Uh, this the, like the one most important secret to faster than light travel would be great to learn. That'd be cool, but I don't think you'd be able to understand it. Oh, well, I mean, like, that's... I, I just want to get, like, the the one major key element so I can just bring that to, like, scientists that actually know what the fuck just they're doing. Just let them... You know? Yeah, let them download it into your brain. Yeah. There you, oh, wow, yeah. Hey, if that's an option. I would teach it the middle finger and have it believe that that was, like, you know, the way that people, like, greeted each other. Yeah. And that's the way I greet some people. <laughs> any any alien that contacts us as first contact deserves anything they get. <laughs> uh, all right, one more. Out of the seven billion people of Earth, 
We chose the level zero NPCs. <laughs> and their comedic schmuckery. <laughs> yes. Best fictional alien. Both an individual alien and a race. And a race. Oh my. <sighs> That's a rough one, man. There's so many to choose from. I would go probably with the Q because John Delancey is delightful. Yeah. They're also like omnipotent and all powerful. Yeah, you know. It's kinda gotta, right? Like It's a good answer. It's a good answer. Yeah. I was like the xenomorphs from Alien. Their design is perfect. What they do is yep. the best. Everybody's been trying to just make them forever. <laughs> what they do is the best. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, like ripping if, people if apart. If you disregard every film after the second one, yes. Well, maybe even the third one, sure. It it holds up if you go into it without like a few years between it and uh, and like the the second one. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, like ET's race. They're so peaceful, and they like plants and shit. And they're shaped weird. <laughs> That's true. I like them. Weird-shaped botanist people like, with healing what, fingers. What kind of fucking... Like, how did they evolve to have glowing hearts and fingers? How did that help? Do they live on a dark planet? Do they need, like... And if so, why do they need light? I don't get it, man. I don't understand how they got that. But good for them. Love them. Some kind of weird bioluminescence. Yeah. Andrew? I'm gonna have to go with uh, with Quato from Total Recall. <laughs> He's not an alien. He's more a mutant than an alien. He's more but, like what? What's what is an alien but a space mutant? <laughs> well, a space mutant. I mean, he mutated. Uh, are, aren't we splitting hairs there? Like, well, I think he was the result. Well, maybe he is. Away. I think there might be some sort of weird alien stuff that's happening on Mars that happened oh, to you make fucking Quato. Think? Well, <laughs> they say it's because of the lack of oxygen caused mutations, but that's not what lack of oxygen does. No, lack of <laughs> oxygen just kind of kills you and or makes you delirious but over time. But in that world, when you have lack of oxygen, you go, ah, 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 your eyes pull That's down. true. You know what? You know what, like, Mars does have a lot of that might mutate you? Radiation. Yeah, that could like, do it. Like, just a shit ton of it. it could okay, There's not so, much atmosphere out there, so... Yeah. So, assume Why? for a second very easily that I'm an idiot. <laughs> sure. Explain to Go me on. and outline the difference between a space mutant and an alien. Okay, well, a space mutant theoretically could be part human. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's like tell me the difference between a Sasquatch and a wood ape. <laughs> okay, okay, no, but I'm actually telling you, I, I, I'm a space mutant. It's true. The the difference is that an alien is not is completely non-human, whereas a mutant is at least part. A, human. a space mutant could be part human, and 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 in the yeah, case, true. Of, I guess you could have alien mutants, but like that would be that that's just a hat on a hat right there. You know? <laughs> hat on a hat. But I mean, yeah, like that's yeah, yeah, that's all. But so you don't you don't have an alien, is what you're saying? Well, I mean, for the purpose of this apparently hair splitting contest, <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> oh, shit. oh boy! Well, and with that, we are out uh, of time. Oh, thank you for watching, everybody. Hope that you enjoyed. Uh, Space questions. I thought in the, in the latter half of our space questions today. I thought for sure you were going to pick Jodie Foster's dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, what's her face's dad from uh, from that Best one alien TV ever. series? <laughs> you know, we, it, he happened after the uh, you know the, the ball machine. You know, the ball. Actually, <laughs> once the ball worked, you know, she went there and she found her dad. His fucking dad. The, yeah. He was the best alien ever. Not even. Not when Not the ball fucking contact, broke and but, uh, killed people, you know. Yeah. What was that show with the with the uh, Frank Sinatra swing on a star? <laughs> what the what fuck? Talking about? Little girl. Are you talking about so Dad's an alien? Oh Jesus! What are you talking about? It's an old show. That's gonna be fucking in my head all fucking night. 
Oh no, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, f- tune in next time to find out what the fuck Luke's talking about. Yeah, if you don't remember <laughs> what that, t- if you remember what that TV show was that I'm talking about with very vague uh, instructions, uh, young girl, father is an alien. She communicates to him through like a fucking like see-through Rubik's cube, and she can like <laughs> stop time and shit. <laughs> yeah, I- you know what I'm talking about. Our, See you next time. Bye, everybody. everybody. Was it General Hospital or All My Children had an alien subplot? <laughs> Back in, like, the 90s. The early 90s. The well, wasn't, that the, wasn't that the soap uh, Passions? No, Passions is was just off the rails. This was actually oh. one of the serious ones that had a whole Again, alien you're splitting subplot. hairs. I know. <laughs> okay. See, I don't watch soap. Bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. I just remember. No, Passions had fucking aliens, but that's not the one I'm talking about. <laughs> that one was just... That one was... <laughs> like... <laughs> the other one was completely serious relationship. It had, realm, it had, it had doorways sudden, to other dimensions, but there weren't <laughs> aliens. <laughs> uh, bye.